What's up guys? I'm Cheyenne, that tall book girl. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today is the start of another reading vlog and one that I'm very excited about that I have been anticipating for a while and I wasn't really sure when I was going to start it, but this was actually my book club pick for my local book club that I do with a bunch of girls in my hometown. And also Sam from Sam Reads a Little has been talking about this so much and then Tori from Novel Life and then Jess from Peace Love Books and then I was having some serious FOMO of Magnolia Parks. Um, this book is all over every spectrum. I feel like people have not shut up about it and I need to understand what the hype about it is. Um, from what I was told in the beginning was that it's angsty, there's cheating, it's been compared to Gossip Girl set place in London and that's everything that I think sounds amazing. So why not read it? It's a big chunker and I'm going to try to read it physically because I want to experience it in full flesh. And normally I'm an ebook girl, but I'm going to try to take a different route this time and see how this goes. Um, now, so we had reading sprints last night on my friend McKay from Oh Hey It's McKay on her channel. And I did start it and I got about 45 pages in, I believe already what i'm picking up is that bj and magnolia are 1000 percent in sync with each other like there is no denying that even though she makes it very clear that she dates and he screws around um we do know that something happened that broke them up in the past they've been friends for a while i want to say that they gave romance a shot and it didn't work out i'm assuming he did something but he has made it very clear how much he still loves her. And he, he said over and over again, I'm in love with her. I'm in love with her. I'm in love with her. So I already know this is going to be a messy romance. Um, what way it's going to go, I don't know. The cover does not give a whole lot away. And it very much reminds me of Alice in Wonderland. I don't know why. So I'm thinking that we're going to see like a rabbit or something like that, but I don't know. So I'm like, people keep calling it Magnolia universe too. And I'm like, is this fantasy? Is this going to turn into something like world building or anything like that? I don't know, but I am enjoying it so far. Um, without a doubt, you can tell that they feel like they're soulmates and I can tell this is going to be a messy romance. So I'm here for it. I'm really excited to find out what else is happening. One thing I know I definitely want to know is what BJ did to mess up his chances with Parks, with Magnolia, and then um, where this is going to go. Because she's saying that she dates, so I'm assuming she's going to start seeing someone else, and then maybe he's going to go a little loco crazy. It's kind of giving me like Harden Tessa vibes and like the toxicness of it, but I don't know. So we'll see. I am getting ready to go into work. There's Haven. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go into work and then what are we doing today? I don't think anything. I think this is like the one night we don't have anything going on. Baseball is starting yeah. soon, so our life is about to get yeah, crazy. Yeah, I have to do um tryouts for kid picks. Yep, you got tryouts coming up. I hope I get it, Mom. You are baby. You're gonna do your best and you're gonna I do hope great. I, hit a home run. I think so. So also too and I'm twenty bucks, right? If you hit a home run, we'll give you 20 bucks. Yep. Um, also, I forgot to mention too, the writing in this is very lyrical and beautiful. And at first I wasn't really sure if I was going to like it with the way people were saying, but it is almost as if the characters are, are speaking and are like reading the book to you instead of, I mean, it's in first person, but it would be like, like they'll say something like, Oh, Magnolia and I are soulmates, but you knew that already. Like it'll address you as if they're talking to you, but it's still in first person. And I'm really loving it. I feel like it's very easy to relate to, very easy to read. And I have a feeling I'm going to fly through this book and these pages. So I'm really excited. Um, we don't have a whole lot going on. Like I said, getting ready to go into work. And then I'm probably going to do nothing but read this tonight after the kids go to bed, if I can stay awake. And hopefully um, I'll be able to check in then. Yeah, but because I, she falls asleep, right? I, I, it takes me like two hours to fall asleep. Yeah, right? yeah. Probably like five. But I have a deadline on this because I'm collabing on this vlog with Jess from Honest Fiction. I love Jess so much. She's amazing. Love her videos and how well-rounded she is as a romance reader. Um, we are going to do this together. We both started. I think she started it the day before I did. 
So this vlog is hopefully gonna go out next Wednesday. Um, I'm pretty sure I can get it done by then. If not, I might have to just buy the ebook and switch to that because I like to read at night and you know, I don't like wanna have a light on and all that. So we'll see, we'll see how far I can get. I'm really excited. Thank you guys for watching oh, and sticking along for this entire journey. If she finishes the book in um, less than a week, you guys have to like and subscribe. Oh. Yeah. What he said. Okay, so here's my quick thought real quick. One thing I'm not liking is how it goes, the way that she transitions her scenes, I don't feel like you get any type of lead up it's, it'll just go from like, oh, we were here, here, and here. Oh, it reminds me of this thing that happened in the past. And it'll go straight to the past. Like, there's no italics. There's no, like, formatting for transitioning the scenes. And I don't like that. I don't like the past to the present where you don't know what's, where you don't know what's happening. Um, so I'm not really crazy about that. Also, BJ's really annoying me. I'm only, like, 105 pages in. And I'm like, what's going on? I need a little bit more plot because it's moving kind of slow. I'm really enjoying like the angst part of it. And I mean, it's very evident that they are compatible with each other and in sync with one another. And the other person, like when they're in the same room, um, they're definitely each other's safe net. And I think that's good, but that's also kind of a problem for me when I'm reading it because I want more to it. Like, there's not a whole lot going on plot-wise other than, like, it just seems to be, like, skipping day from day. So, in ways, it kind of feels like a journal entry, almost like, today we're doing this. Oh, and then the next day, we're at a party. And then, so there's no flow to what's happening. I don't know. if that, It's really hard to explain, and I think the writing is what's making it difficult to interpret and give explanation for but I strangely like it at the same time I just don't know how much longer I'm going to stay interested if something doesn't happen so we'll see do I love this book or do I hate this book that is the question I'm asking myself every five seconds while reading this I'm either angry or I'm sad or I'm sympathetic or I'm like, yeah. Or I'm like, okay, maybe there's a little bit of hope and then it gets stomped on and then I'm back to square one again and I'm angry again and I don't like it, but then I love it, but there's no plot. I don't know how this is going to go for me. I have never felt so all over with my emotions. Um, and I normally, I have a vibe of how I'm going to rate a book, but I got no clue with this one. So I'm almost 200 pages in and I can't physically put it down. So I know I'm going to go home and read some more and hopefully I'll finish it by today or tomorrow. I'm reading it a lot faster than I thought I would. Although I love the writing in like the lyrical sense, but I also don't like a lot of things about it too. Gosh, I am so all over the board with this. Um, this is going to be really interesting and I'm curious to see what happens in the end. <laughs> Such a drastic change from how I look now to how I've looked in other videos. Um, okay. I'm on page 358 and I feel like first off, I haven't really given an explanation to why is there a cup on my window up there? These children. Um, I feel like I haven't really given a good explanation about what the book is even about, but I feel like I almost can't because there's no plot. It's literally just like back and forth between BJ and Magnolia Parks. Um, they're still toxic. He still keeps screwing up. He still keeps sleeping with other people. Um, she's been fake dating Tom, but now they're starting to have real feelings for each other. They're using each other as a foxhole and it's not going as planned because they actually have a connection and they were thinking originally it was going to be just like a friendship type of thing but it's very clearly not and she just admitted that she kissed bj while he was away on a trip and tom is like um so are we ending this and she's like yeah i think so and he's like but what and she's like but i kind of don't want to and then she admitted to liking him and then he kissed her and he's like this is me throwing my um what do you say? What did he say? This is me tossing my hat in the ring. So 
hopefully things pick up a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not loving it right now. I'm not loving it. I'm not getting any angst from it. I'm not getting any emotional connection. I'm not feeling any romance other than lust between them. Um, and honestly, like all of the scenes and everything are very short lived. And basically the author is just talking about what happened and we're not actually experiencing what happened. And that's my problem. Just ignore the zits on my face. Okay, guys, I'm breaking out. It's it's that time of the month. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I'm really struggling with that because we're not seeing a whole lot of in-depth interaction other than hearing them talking about how they're soulmates. But they don't really feel like soulmates to me. They just feel like, what's the word for it? They just feel like they have just known each other for so long and they're so comfortable with each other, but they're self-sabotaging each other and their relationship and that's why it's not working out and they're not communicating and they're being very destructive with each other's feelings and that is causing majority of the issues. Um, Magnolia says no to BJ and BJ runs off and retaliates and then he feels bad about it and it's the same cycle over and over again. Yes, is it toxic? Yes, but other than them having like a history of like growing up together and always having each other, there's not really a romance, which, well, at least that's my opinion. That's my opinion. I don't really feel a romance. Like I said, I haven't been to a point where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so angsty. Like, I can't believe this. It is not like that for me at all. And I think a lot of it has to do with not actually experiencing situations with them other than for like a paragraph of a conversation and then it's over. It's really embarrassing that I'm going to put myself like this on video, but we're just going to keep it real here. I'm probably going to end up finishing it this morning and then I'll do a check-in in a little bit, but hopefully... Tom steps it up, even though this is a romance between BJ and Magnolia, so I know somehow they're probably going to end up together, and I'm thinking that's going to be the final chapter, but I'm kind of team Tom. I'm kind of team Tom. Unless BJ's going to grovel, then we might have a turnaround, but as of right now, I'm not holding out hope for that. Well, your girl finished that book a whole lot faster than I thought I was going to, and I've got some feelings. I've got some feelings. Now, I know that most of my vlog, it was very much, I was in the unpopular opinion of not loving it. But I have gone back and forth so much by loving it and then hating it and loving it and hating it and then question why I'm loving it and then questioning why I'm hating it. So here's my thing. BJ and Magnolia just self-sabotage everything. And I think that that's kind of the point. I think that's the point in them having, what is going on here? I think that's the point in them having a toxic relationship. And I love that in romance books. However, um, I didn't feel a whole lot of like romance between them. I didn't really feel a deeper connection past the lust. And I mean, yes, they did have a history together. I guess it kind of went without saying that they've known each other forever. My dog is walking in the background, so that's what you hear. Um, it kind of went without saying that they've always been each other's safe place and each other's person. And in that sense, I really love that connection and the way that they are so in sync with each other. But the parts that did bother me was the self-sabotaging and was how they really just didn't think about the best interests of each other. They were constantly saying they were each other's world and they loved each other and would always love each other and they were in love with each other. But all you saw was BJ retaliating just to get Magnolia's attention and then Magnolia like leading Tom along, but Tom was like the sweetest person in the world. And, but then at the same time, like, this is why I'm struggling. But then like the last hundred pages of the book, I was fully invested. Like I was loving it. And I actually felt angst at the end, but the beginning of it, I wasn't feeling any type of angst at all. So everybody kept saying that this was this big angsty romance and I just didn't sense it. It was just like diary entries of day by day of this couple breaking up, falling back into each other wanting to work it out and then being like, 
okay, well, I'm just gonna deal with you being with this other person and it's nothing new to me. It's something I've seen for years and it's just never gonna work between us. Or then trying to like give it a shot and then we get one scene that screws it up and we're back at zero again. So that was the frustrating part, but the last 100 pages I flew through because I like all of the things that I was wanting in the beginning were happening towards the end. Like when he did cheat on her, we got answers for that. And that like shook things up and actually made a big fiasco about it. And I was like, okay, now something like now it's getting interesting. And then Tom finally like stood his ground once she ended things with him. And then you could see that she was actually sad about it. He made the point of saying, BJ's gonna hurt you again and I might not be there next time. And that like literally ripped my heart out, which I was feeling angst from Tom. And I think, I think Jessa Hastings probably wants us to be rooting for BJ, but I'm not kidding. Throughout this entire book, I was rooting for Tom. I didn't find a whole lot of redeemable qualities in BJ. I did feel like he was sensitive and I loved that he expressed and shared how he felt about Magnolia, but he was impulsive. And for someone who was so in love with her, he was constantly hurting her. But then again, like towards the end, you got a little bit insight to how she was actually hurting him as well. Like he did mess up one time. He's constantly telling you how much he loves you and you're never going to forgive him. And you're constantly going to hold this thing over his head. If you want to be with him, forget about it, forgive him and move on. So I love BJ for that because he finally stood up to that and spoke up. So I just feel all over the place. I don't even know how I would rate it, but the ending made me want to keep reading. So did I think this book deserves five stars? No, there were a lot of issues with it. And I have heard that it gets better over time. I'm, I'm falling between three and a half and four stars if I'm being generous. Um, I think I'm gonna go at three and a half stars. I think I'm gonna go at three and a half stars. And this is not to say that I didn't enjoy it because my reading experience, I loved. Was it a book that I could put down when I was reading it? No, but it was a book that as I, well, it was a book that I had no desire to pick back up. So I couldn't put it down while I was reading it but then I had no desire to go grab it and keep reading once it was already down. And I'm not crazy about that, but as soon as I got to reading it, I was enjoying it. I feel like I'm all over the place, but that's literally how my brain is working right now and how my emotions are taking me throughout this book. Um, I don't know. Also, her friend can rot in hell. That was a little, that was a little harsh, but uh, the fact that a friend would do that and would make BJ keep it a secret and try to encourage him to not talk about it really irked me. And I feel like Magnolia could have done a lot more damage than what she did and how she handled her. And at the end, we see her leaving and I'm like, where are you going? Where are you going? Is Tom coming back in the picture? Because I really want redemption for Tom. Tom deserves that. That he is probably, honestly, between him, Magnolia, and BJ, I felt like I understood him the most. And I don't think that was intentional on the author's point, but she made me fall in love with him and feel an emotional connection towards him more than I did the hero. And I don't know. And the whole thing about like her making every guy fall in love with her. I thought that was a little dramatic um, also because we don't really have control over who falls in love with us. You know, not like I've got a million guys falling in love with me, but we don't have control over that. And if someone falls in love with you, sometimes it's because you're a great friend and it's from a friendship that develops and you can't control whether they have feelings, especially if it's not really reciprocated or um, you make no promises or leading them into. So I felt like that was really harsh for her to be blamed for, but it was kind of entertaining that she had all these guys that were like confessing their undenied love for her. So yeah, I don't know. I'm very torn. Um, I, I thought it was a really great reading experience and I read it a lot quicker than I thought I would finish it. It was fun. I'm glad I read it and I can definitely see what the hype is about it. 
I just kind of was wanting more detail where I felt like there deserved to be detail and less like I could, and I understand like it was her thing to know the brands and designers and everything of all the clothes people were wearing. But that was just like, that when it, she went into such deep detail on things like that, but would cut an important conversation short or like an important experience short. And I'm like, I wanted more of that scene. Like I, I want to feel something from these characters. I want to experience what they're experiencing. And a lot of it was just talking about how they felt or what they experienced and not actually seeing it play out. And that, I think that was the biggest problem for me. Um, yeah, that's like all I have to say. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna read the second book or not. I'm leaning towards yes, but not right now because I have way too many other books to read and I don't wanna get myself in a slump. So I'm gonna start reading books that I really want to and then maybe I will pick this back up and then hopefully read the other book after the second one. The first one's Daisy something, which I, I didn't really see a lot of Daisy actually in the first book, but I liked Christian from what I did see about him. Um, that's all I have to say. Sorry for no B-roll or anything fun in this. I, like I said, I read it a lot quicker than I thought I would. And I didn't have a whole lot of free time to check in because I was just flying through the pages. Well, thank you guys for watching. If you've made it this far, I'm sorry if I upset you, if you loved this book and it's something that triggered you in any way. I did notice that when I did my Archer's Voice vlog, I got a lot of really hateful like backlash on it and not gonna lie, it really upset me because I have always been very transparent on my channel. I have always, I have always given an honest review and just because, and let me say this, I have always completed every book that I have claimed to complete and I always will. I will never get on here and review a book that I didn't finish all the way through. Also, I will not give big spoilers away. I will not do that. So I don't, I don't want my words misconstrued, but also I want you guys to know that just because I don't like a book doesn't mean that the book is bad or that I wouldn't recommend it to other people or just, just cause something doesn't work for me doesn't mean it won't work for you. And I don't want you to get discouraged if, your, if maybe your favorite book is Magnolia Parks I think that's incredible. I know so many people who love this book. I did enjoy it. I just had some issues with it. I'm not discounting that. I'm not bashing the author. I think her writing was beautiful and I feel like it was a really beautiful story. Um, I just don't want hate on my part because I am a book reviewer and this is my channel and I understand that I'm not gonna be the creator for everybody but I just want us to all get along and appreciate and respect each other's opinions. And that's really what this is, is my reading experience and my opinion. And if I offended you in any way in Archer's voice, I apologize for that, but that was what my standpoint was on that book. And I just appreciate all of you guys for watching my videos, for supporting my channel. I feel like I've been very transparent with that and how much I do love and appreciate all of you and also the books that I recommend because I do tend to not love books that everybody else loves and that's just my own personal taste. And then there are a lot of books that I love that other people don't, which is totally fine. So thank you guys for always being here and watching and tuning in. I, it means more than I could ever say and it's, I, I wouldn't have a channel without you guys. So thank you for that. Um, yeah. If you just listen to me ramble and you want to like and subscribe and comment, do that. I love talking to you guys, but thank you for watching and make sure you check out Magnolia Parks for yourself. All right, guys, I'm going to go and have some family time and I will see you next time. Bye guys.